Hello demo developers, welcome to a technical primer to Canton or Demo 2.0. I will assume that some of you have familiarity with Demo 1.0, but for all of you who are new to Canton, this is for you. Canton is a privacy-enabled distributed ledger and a ledger protocol that's enhanced when deployed with complementary blockchains. This version makes it easier than ever to build and deploy best-in-class multi-party applications. Demo 2.0 enables multi-party applications that synchronize between multiple blockchains in traditional IT systems while ensuring the privacy businesses need to protect sensitive data and comply with regulations such as the GDPR. In this short video, we'll briefly go through the core concepts in Canton and see how they work in concert to enable a level of data privacy that is not possible with other frameworks. We'll cover components such as parties, participant nodes, and domains, and see how they interface with each other to enable full sub-transaction privacy without trading off security or consistency. Let's get started. Let's start with something that we are already very familiar with, parties. Parties remain unchanged from Demo 1.0. Conceptually, it still represents a person or a legal entity. And roles such as signatories and observers are still the same. However, there is a change in the way party IDs are generated, and we'll cover that in a later part of the video. So every party is going to need a host, right? The party itself doesn't talk directly to the underlying DLT or database, so we're going to need an intermediary to go in between them. And that intermediary is the participant node. Now, the participant node has various important functions, but most important of all, it exposes a public ledger API for the parties. There is a many-to-many -many relationship between parties and participant nodes. That is, multiple parties can be connected to one participant node, and each party can be hosted by more than one participant node. In this latter case, the same party hosted by different participant nodes will be recognized in Canton with unique party IDs. And it's time for a sidebar. In addition to the public ledger API, the participant node also exposes an admin API. This is important because this is going to help you manage connections, add and remove parties and demo archives, and run diagnostics. Let's take a closer look at the interfacing of participant nodes and drivers. In 1.0, you have the participant nodes integrated into the drivers. In 2.0, the participant node talks to the Canton protocol, and that talks to the drivers. Time for another sidebar. The participant node is not the only node that's operating using the Canton protocol. You're going to find that there is something called the mediator node and the topology manager node. We won't cover these nodes in this short video, but you can think of them as servers that you can deploy either all together in a monolithic architecture or as standalone microservices. So what we have here is the participant node talking to the Canton protocol, which then talks to the drivers, and the drivers will talk to the underlying DLT or database. This brings us to a point where we introduce a very important concept in Canton called domains. Apart from the participant nodes, the domain nodes, services, and API constitute the domain. This is sometimes called the synchronization domain. And one or more participant nodes is joined into the domain. Here's the fun part. A participant node can be joined to more than one domain, which brings us to our next sidebar. The ability for Kenton to allow multiple participant nodes to join across domains makes it possible for us to create a virtual global ledger where multiple domains are logically connected. With sub-transaction privacy, Canton enables a high level of composability while allowing any domain to freely scale and grow without dependencies on the other domains because each of them is really a private or segregated domain. In Canton, privacy takes the front row seat. For example, Participants in a transaction only see what they're supposed to see in what we call a sub-transaction privacy. What is sub-transaction privacy? Imagine if a party sends a message that contains complementary data that is intended to be received and seen by two different parties separately. 
Without subtransaction privacy, the entire message and its data will be visible to both recipients when the message arrives. Canton ensures subtransaction privacy which guarantees that only the intended recipient sees the data that the recipient has been authorized to see. And all that messaging happens with strong encryption between the nodes. But like SSL, party A and party B need unique identifiers for the encryption to work. This brings us to a very important topic in Canton regarding identities that allow for all that secure messaging. All parties, participant nodes, domains, etc., are represented by a unique identifier. The format is an alias followed by two colons and a fingerprint of the public key. Here's an example. Now, this may have implications in the way you read and use party IDs in your app, and definitely in the navigator and sandbox. Let's wrap this up with the top things you should know moving from demo 1.0 to 2.0. For Canton enabled drivers, we expect that in the majority of cases, backwards compatibility will not be broken. That means that a demo 1.x project should compile unchanged in demo 2.x. Also, a demo 1.x project should run unchanged on a demo 2.x ledger. Changes which we expect to have zero or minimal impact on production customers, except in corner cases, can be found in the release notes. Demo will continue supporting superseded Demo 1.x and associated drivers for a minimum of 12 months. And finally, party IDs are no longer user-defined strings, but are randomly and dynamically generated hashes. Therefore, party IDs should no longer be hard-coded into your code. To help manage dynamic party IDs, the Participant User Manager feature has been added. Details of this change are outlined in the release notes. We have covered a lot in just a few minutes, but we have many resources lined up for you to go in depth into Canton. On Tuesday, April 12th, we are having a special webinar where senior members of the DAML and Canton project management teams will take you through the architecture of DAML 2.0 in Canton. You can register for the live webinar at digitalasset.com slash developers. In the meantime, download the SDK and take a look at the release notes all at our website.